I got a big agenda. Well, we have a big agenda, but I'm not sure we could do it all. But let me just, we'll see how much we can get through. But I want to basically, and I want you know everybody else to help me out. It's not just my presentation. But I want to talk a little about what the AGPA conference, what, it, what AGP is and what the conference is. Briefly about the Special Institute. We'll talk about the two-day institute. We'll talk about the three-day conference, right? Because there's, there's like this, this two-day institute's like a Tuesday and Wednesday, and the three-day conference is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? We'll talk about a little bit about the new member dinner and then scholarships as well. Feel free to ask questions during this process, but I'll just say a few words about AGPA, American Group Psychotherapy Association. It's probably been around for about 76 years. It's a long time. And it's uh, it's basically, it's like, if you want to learn about groups, that's the place to go. It's multidisciplinary. So it's not just a bunch of psychologists or psychiatrists. No, there's music therapists there. There's licensed marriage and family therapists. There's, there's pastoral counselors. I mean, you name it. It's a good mix of people. I've been going for probably about 12 years to the annual conference. And it's a very warm bunch, good people, man. I mean, they're very thoughtful, as we can see later on, about new people coming in as well. You're not just like coming to a conference if you're alone and just like out there in the wind. They do, they have different events so you can make sure you're kind of incorporated in, into the fold to make sure you're, you're, you're welcome. Um, but the conference is like, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great week. The past two years they've had it online. Now they're going to have it again in person in New York. Um, and, and some people may say, well, I don't want to go for a whole week. I can't, I can't afford that. Or I can't, that's too much time off work. Well, I understand it is an expense, right? But we're going to get into scholarships later. But one thing to consider, if you go for the whole week, or at least from Tuesday through Saturday, you're probably looking at about 30, 30, 32, uh, CEUs. Boom, done. Right. I mean, you can really knock it out. Right. And so that's the one, one of the kind of, uh, one of the advantages of going in addition to just kind of just being around people that love group. Right. So. Does anybody else want to say anything about the about just general things, information about the conference and about AGPA? Um, yeah, I will second your observation that it's a very warm and welcoming group. It, the just the people there and the 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 vibe and the setting. It's very inclusive, and it's um yeah, it's sort of like hey, we're all here together. Let's make the best of it, and it just always has that real um, sort of vibe to it. Um, and that's something that, you know, the first time I went, I was like, okay, you know, I guess I could be part of this. I don't know. But then each year that I've gone to it, I really look forward to that, to that piece of being welcomed in and sort of like, oh, this is, you know, this is a group that I'm part of. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's something that's really cool about it. Cool. Anybody else? No. So um, the special institute is is the is the Monday, right? Because that, that's the thing that's a little confusing, right? They have the special institute on Monday, then they have the two day institute, and then they have the three day conference. You can go to any of those, or you can do a combination. The special institute this year is going to be by Ronnie Levine, who's like a big time group therapist, psychoanalyst out of New York City. I've actually attended her uh, process group; she's phenomenal. Um, but that's basically where they kind of highlight uh, a speaker, right? They, I think the first time I went, they had Molin Lash. Uh, they have other, other biggies where they highlight some sort of speaker where you get to hear their theory and they talk about it. And then they'll do a demonstration group as well, right? For like an hour and a half or so. They have some volunteers from the, from the group and then they come from the crowd and then they kind of do a group, right? And then they talk about it afterwards. So it's a unique opportunity to kind of see somebody's, you know, uh, theory and what they have with, you know, I think hers is probably modern analytic. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the quite the topic that she's talking about this year, but that where she's, that's what she, she, she normally talks about. And so that'll be like an opportunity to kind of just learn about her theory and then and, and have a high speaker highlighted and then um, watch the demonstration group. That's for the first day. The two-day institute is, is kind of like the main thing, for me at least. So that's an opportunity where you're going to be in a group of about 10 to 12 people, sometimes a little bit more, uh, but normally they're kind of a little bit smaller. And it's a two-day group, and so, um, which can be intimidating, right? Like, what, who, what? We're going we're gonna to go, what is this, therapy? What is it? Well, it's an opportunity for you have someone who's well trained, right? Who has to go through a process to lead a group. So you're in a group with other group therapists, right? And um, and one and so some of the things I think about, I've heard people come in the past. They say it's it's a great opportunity to grow professionally because you're seeing a group therapist work, right? And to grow personally, you work you're working on some things in there. They say it's not therapy, but it, it is somewhat therapy, right? I mean, but I guess they say it's not therapy because it's Maybe they legally they can't say that I guess, and also it's it's only for two days, right? So it's not like an ongoing group. Two, two days are done, right? But there is there is work being done in there, right? There's there's laughter, there's some you know, some conflict, there's there's tears, 
there's the understanding, I and mean, there's everything that goes on in like a regular group. You know, there's like there's the forming, norming, and all that stuff, storming, there's all this stuff, right? Um, and I and I, the first one I mentioned many years ago by Larry Veers, he says, and he, I mean, he led the institute, this two-day group. He said he still does, he's probably in his 60s at that point. He still does the institute sometimes because he says he never wants to forget what it's like to be a, a client in a group. So that's one of the reasons why we do that. People say, I'm not going to do that. It's anxiety provoking. I don't want to reveal stuff. I don't want, well, we're having our clients and patients do that. We can't feel the same sometimes. You know, raw, open, or, or kind of nervous. Who are these people? Can I trust these individuals? Well, the first one, the first time, uh, actually, the second and third one I went to, we have tags, right? Zero to four years or four to nine. I think they have, or, or newcomer. And I kind of asked the question. I think I saw the tags, right? And I said, uh, what did I say? Oh, I thought this group was for like four to nine years. I think I saw something like new, new people. And so the group leader says, so there's an issue of trust arising. Wow, right? He, he, he hit the mark. I didn't even realize it. I didn't even know I was talking about trust. I just felt uncomfortable. Could I trust the group? That's the kind of caliber of people you have in these groups. They could pick up. Um, so I, I just, I just, you know, and they also they also say one of the things before I kind of open it up to other people that attended the groups or any questions, but they had these general. If you look at the website, I think they recently sent out an email about um, from AGPA. We go to the website. There's general process groups, right? Zero to four years, four to nine years. Right? So it's just a general. Then they had like special topics. So people say, what the hell's the difference? Well, general is just there's no real topic. It's just you know it's like a regular regular group. Special topics. Let's say they want to you know want to say, well, I'm kind of going through some grief, I'm going to check out this bereavement group where they kind of do a little bit of psychoeducation, you know, but the main, but, they, but the actual group, but there is some psychoeducation. Or they'll have maybe um, system center groups, or they'll have a Jungian, a Jungian group, or they, they have various topics that you can kind of choose, right? So from for me, I did general process for the first couple of years. In the last few, uh, four or five years, I've been doing the special topics. I, you know, I kind of, I like that stuff. Um, but it's 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 definitely you know it's a little nerve wracking and stressful, um, and at the same time it's a great uh, learning experience, right? To really really learn what it's like to be in a group and see a master at work, kind of, um, you know, navigate and work with a group where there's no screening. Think about that. We have people we screen them. We said mm, maybe not a good fit for this group. Another group. No, there's no screening. They just you just have ten individuals and the group leader is is off and running, right? So. Anyway, if anybody else want to say anything about their experience in institutes or? You know, when you had mentioned about um, being part of the group um, and, you know, what that what you can get from that experience, not just of, of, you know, knowing what it's like to be a group participant, to be on the client side of things, which is, for me at least, it's been very, very helpful to get a sense of what it's like for someone to join a new group, to come into an existing group, to, you know, form relationships or whatever. Um, but also when you mentioned like, oh, you see the masters at work, um, to see someone who is, you know, really experienced, the, the, the group leaders are, you know, really experienced. They've been doing it for 20 or 30 years or more. Um, and the way it works is, at least for me, you sort of enter this group, you become a participant, you're doing your own personal work in a way, um, but then you're also paying attention as an observer in a way, and, and someone is trying to learn about how to do groups and what kind of intervention might be useful here. And with that awareness, I found that, you know, there might've been a, a difficult challenge or there might've been sort of a turning point, or at least what I felt was a turning point. And then I can pay attention to uh, the leader and what they did, what their intervention was in that moment. And then later on in the day or the next day at the conclusion of the Institute, ask them, hey, do you remember this happened? And you went, you know, you went and responded in this way, or, you know, what did you think of that? What did you think was happening in the group? What were the themes? What was the nature of your intervention? Why did you choose that? All that type of stuff. Um, and so even though it's not like a, a real sort of didactic experience, you know, where they sort of like, you know, like teaching a class of going over the, the different elements of a theory or whatever, um, it still really has that educational component to it, I found, um, because you could ask, you know, and um, what was going on 
what they thought of it, why they chose to do what they did. Um, and, and then you access that stuff later on, you know, as you're leading other groups. Yeah, I definitely second that as well, Andy. Um, I had the, the honor of being a recipient of one of the scholarships last year, and it was my first time. And the Institute was just marvelous. I mean, it was so rich in learning and not only like from a personal aspect of being like a participant in this two day group, but but also putting off your therapist hat and then kind of immersing yourself in that role of learning how um, folks feel in group. And there's just so much richness to the experience. Um, I really enjoyed it and I wish I could attend this year, but unfortunately my schedule doesn't permit and I'm still, you know, staying on the cautious side with COVID, but um, it was a fantastic experience and I would strongly recommend it for you know anybody who's who's considering it it was really life-changing mm -hmm. for me and it grew my love for therapy even more as well for group therapy wow yeah was, intense yeah. it's intense it's yeah. an intense experience too yeah yeah um, it is yeah not just because of what's being covered um, and, you know, the different levels of experience of people who are entering the group and the different skills and approaches and modalities and all that stuff. Um, but just because it's long, <laughs> you yeah. do a group for a whole day and then you do, an, you know, another group for the whole day. So you cover a lot of ground and a lot of material. Yeah. Yeah. It's typically like 930 to about 12 for the first day, and you about to have an hour and a half lunch and you probably go from about, about two, about 130 to about five. And the next day it's probably like nine to 12 and then maybe have an hour lunch or something or, or you know, and then you know, it goes to five, right? So there's little breaks too in between, right? And so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, should we should we take questions now or should we wait to the end as far as I mean, people I bring questions for the Institute? What people, what should we do? Okay. Yeah, I think if anyone has questions, it might be a good time to ask about the Institute. That's a good idea, yeah. For people's thoughts so far. I'm not sure I want to, I'm interested in doing this, but I, I was curious about, I thought there was an institute where it was a leaderless group and it was all day or I forget how they set it up. I don't think it was 24 hours. Okay. Uh, but I, I remember reading about it. And I, I was just curious about what that entailed. I'm not aware of that. Uh, I don't know if that would be an institute. It might be something else. You know, you saw the AGP website for this for the conference. It was last year. I thought there was like a group that um, was leaderless, and you had to sign up for it. I think, and uh, it, it pretty much went on almost the entire time of the conference, or large percentage of the time i think you're thinking of the large group which yes think, that's yeah, it they have, they have it's not it's not ongoing i think um it's like they have like they'll have it like during lunch one day they might have an, an, another one another day it's not ongoing because it's kind of have it in pockets right when there's like free time so it'll be like a large group yeah i've actually never attended that i've heard about it but never attended it in all my all my years yeah oh i was going to ask you about that miguel because i haven't been and i don't know what to think of it but it did like they just have this big, huge circle in like a, you know a large conference room, and there's like 150 people there or 500 people. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I like the idea of a leader, man. That's why I haven't done it. <laughs> I want to be grand. <laughs> well, people have done it. and They really enjoyed it, and they you know they like it and so forth. So yeah, that's I think that's that's part of the conference and like during the lunch breaks, I believe. Yeah. I have another question. Uh, besides, you know, like I would just ask Miguel, like, who would I select for the institute leader? Like, how would you go about selecting somebody? I know Miguel brought broke it down between special interests. So if you're like working on something that might fall on that special interest topic, that makes sense. But if you're going to do the general process, um, what I did was I kind of looked through the names. I just looked to see who they were affiliated with and. Um, you know, what type of group it might look like and, you know, what approach they're using. But besides that, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know who to select. So yeah, I was yeah. curious about your thought process about that. Well, I can answer in a second, but what, how did you, Tanya and, and, uh, 
Andy and uh, Lassa, did you do an institute in the, in the past? No, okay. No. How did you folks choose? The way I did it was, um, I mean, there was so much selection. And of course, you know, you don't know these people personally or professionally, but I just Googled a couple of names and then I kind of just took a shot in the dark and I said, okay, well, <laughs> you know, and it was also based on kind of my level of experience. So I know the groups, you can join different process groups based on, you know, your own kind of experience in group therapy and being quote unquote a newbie. I went with like the beginners level um, and then I just picked one from the list. That's how I did mine. And it was great. I mean, I had a fantastic group leader and you learn from everybody, right? Like there's no, there's like, obviously group leaders kind of differ in, in, you know, ways that they may lead group, but in general, it's all, it's all fantastic. Oh, oh. is there some bad with, with you, Andy? Ah, uh, it might be. Oh, sounds like someone's mowing the lawn <laughs> in your office. <laughs> well, actually, I'm in my apartment, um, and that is the laundry machine in the background. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Sorry about that. That is aggressive it's, laundry. Those clothes are. Clean. I know. I know. They're yes, right. There's, there's, you know, baby laundry in there, so it's working extra hard. That's so, uh, sorry about the background. Um, I I was going to say the way I chose, I think I've been to three, I've definitely been to three, maybe four. The way I've chosen, uh, I started with the idea of, okay, which type of group do I want to be in? So like there's a zero to four years. And then I think there's like a, you know, five to whatever years. And then there's like a sort of advanced group. So I felt like I want to do the, you know, I want to, do this in order and start with the uh, with other people who are at the same sort of level of experience that I am. Yep. Um, and then uh, then once I did that, then I did what Tanya was talking about, which is to um, Google each person. And then after a couple of years, I remembered, you know, I saw one person, one leader who I already was with and they were terrific, but I wanted to try someone different. Um, you know, there, there's a, a couple people that I sort of established, relation, you know, just from going to the conferences and, and getting to know these people um, where I've asked them, like, hey, is there someone you're choosing or is there some reason why you like this person over the other? Um, but uh, so this year I'm going to go. There's also a, a multi-level, like where it's just people of all levels going to the group. I think there's one option like that. So this year I'm either going to do that one or just go to the second, you know, five years to whatever years experience. And then I'll just look at each of the different leaders and see which one stands out to me in, on their website. What I did was I, I did what everybody else did to begin with. And then I just, I meet people. And then I, and then I just asked, I think I asked Josh Gross for a number of years. Now I asked Francis Koskowskis. Um, another mentor of mine, and they kind of lead me to uh, to people that they know, right? That they uh, they know that they're, uh, they 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 know they do good work. I think they all do good work. It's just that, but they just feel more comfortable. They, they, some names they like, I don't know. I don't know about this person, or that, that person, but I know this person. It's like okay, I'll go. I'll go that route. So, so if anybody here wants to you know, any uh, tips of people that I know, you, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat, and then people can just um, email me if they feel they're comfortable, and want some want some feedback. So. Um, or people I may have worked with or some ideas. Yeah, so, um, yeah. I also think you don't have to worry so much. They're all good. Um, yeah. You know, each each one, each of the leaders I've you know entered or been part of their group, they all had different styles, but like each one I learned from, and each one um, was really good. Yeah. Thank you. Here's something else to, con to consider. There's a lot of evaluation going on at, at, at uh, AGPA. Part of every pres presentation, there's an observer. I'll talk about like for the three day, not the, uh, well, I'll talk about the instant a little bit. There's an observer who gives them feedback. Part of the process too, there's an observer. Only for about 45 minutes of the, let's say, 15 hours that you're in group, 14 hours. There's an observer for about 45 minutes. They want to kind of see what's going on, right? And so, um, which is also kind of interesting, right? Because once they come into the room, whether it's online or in, you know, people start to get nervous and they may they may regress a little bit. They may not talk as much about some emotional material. It depends, right? But they just want them to be there to kind of just have some accountability, and so they can discuss um, anything that they see. You know, some tips. So. Okay. 
Um, let's talk about the three-day conference. So that's the two-day institute. The three-day conference is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that's where you can either do like a, a full day, a half day, two hours, one hour, all sorts of different types of presentations you can attend. I think in the morning they have some research ones. Um, they have <laughs> They have, you know, different topics. Um, they, they, this year hasn't come out, but they have anything from like um, how to make sure you're not doing individual therapy in a group setting, or or they may have something on modern analytic theory, or they might have something on, you know, how to how to incorporate somatic experiences in your group. They have all kinds of topics, you name it. And also, what's interesting is that part of that, part, lots of times though, like I said before, like in the the, the special institute on Monday. They'll, if it's like a half day or, or a couple hour, they may, they lots of times they'll do demonstration groups. So let's say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Let me get eight volunteers or six volunteers and you'll see them work. That's very, it's very experiential. So that's it's not a lot of lectures where there's like PowerPoints and everybody, no, it's not a lot of that. It's a more of experiencing, feeling it, learning it by being in it. Um, so that's like on Thursday, Friday, as well as Saturday. Right. Um, they also have like a new member dinner which I've, I've never attended that, but I think that's the second, I think that's on Tuesday. Anybody here ever attended that? Ten, have you attended that, um, Andy, when it was live? No, they had that, I think that's on a Tuesday. So new members of AGPA or new, new members of uh, people kind of attending the conference, you can go to a dinner. Um, they also have a new member breakfast on Thursday morning, which I attended, which is kind of cool. Because the first time I didn't really know any, a lot of people, and then I met someone there who's been my friend ever since. Because what happened, what's really cool is that they're thoughtful about everything. When, when they have these various temples, tables for this free breakfast at each table they have people that have been there for a while so that to, to ensure that you're kind of making sure you're kind of you know that that someone's there who's experienced could not that people know about any questions i thought it was very thoughtful very caring um and so that's that's another opportunity to kind of just meet people and it shows how much they care right they also have sigs um anybody here part of a sig i think it's a special interest group andy are you part of a sig uh, no, I'm not, but I really want to participate in one of the SIG groups because yeah. they, they do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, they have like they have various SIGs, I think, um, such as like, I think I went student counseling. They have, um, I think, uh, they have one of women's They have groups. a private practice one as well that I'm, that I'm part of. And yeah. you can actually get um, mentorship as well through a SIG group. So I joined the, the the private practice, the PP SIG group, and I was also connected with a mentor that I've been meeting with once a month um, through through AGPA. So it's it's just really fantastic. I mean, there's just so many wonderful people, so many great opportunities, and so many connections and like meaningful connections that you can make through these SIG groups. And Miguel, you haven't spoken about the social, but the social is just yeah. so much fun as well. And it's just a really nice community and, and group of folks. Yeah, thank you. The social you mean like the on like on Friday or the uh, or the the dance, the F FGPS social or the dance? Yes, the, the actual dance at the very end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they have a dance on that Friday. They have a DJ, they have food and desserts and everything. Uh, and that's kind of cool, right? I mean, what, what conference do you go to where people dance and the DJ and good time? Right? I mean, that's I, I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, so after you've done your institute and kind of, you know, you kind of, done your three day, then you can kind of, you know, might, you might even see your institute leader on the dance floor, right? And so uh, just shaking it down, man. So it's the it's famous dance. What's that? The famous dance. I always hear it. I always hear about it. And I always want to go. But the last, you know, I would end up leaving the day before or the day of and wouldn't get to the dance. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. We also have our FGPS social as well, which we're doing this year, Friday, we'll probably have, you know, five or six o'clock where anybody at the institute that's you know that's um part of our organization can come we'll have a have some beverages and have a little meal at probably someplace close to the agpa uh, main main hotel and that's always a lot, a lot of fun too so but we're, so by 12 42 i'm going to talk about scholarships a little bit um tanya you've received the scholarship why don't you tell us what that was like and what the process was yeah absolutely well it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> i don't recall specifically the process but i right. remember it was um you know writing kind of a letter of I guess support or your letter of interest for the scholarship and then also acquiring a few letters of recommendation. I believe it was three or two. Yeah, um, right. Two. Okay, perfect. And um, yeah, and so, you know, I I was introduced by uh, Dr. Becca Weimerslag and I was just so grateful because it just kind of 
opened up a world of opportunity for me. And I was like, huh, like I've never attended this kind of conference before. I don't even know what I'm signing up for. Like I, I knew ahead of time, like what it entailed and it was group therapy, but I didn't really know the extent of it. Um, and it just really just blew me out of the water. It was so rich and content and learning and um, just just meeting nice people. And, and I still keep in contact with like two other clinicians who I met I guess in like the intro meet and greet groups, um, when it was done virtually, we they put us in like these little breakout rooms and two of the folks that I met there, I'm still in contact with through email. So it's just been a really nice kind of um, community to be part of. And sure, you'll, you know, you have to kind of put in your um, desire, you know, and your obviously your financial need for the conference, but it's it's very much, it's a pretty smooth process and very worth it, very well worth it. They, they now I know the uh the, the deadline is uh, uh, um November 1st and some of you saying well why are you having it so soon I mean, we we wanted to have this earlier but just it's a lot of things happened we couldn't do that so it's about a week away um but here's the thing how do I say this I mean you get it in before the deadline you're almost scared to see the scholarship you know and that's about 700 bucks for registration think about that if you get it after the deadline, you'll probably still get something, but you won't get the full scholarship because it's based on, you know, um, uh, people hitting that deadline, right? But it's, you know, so you have to write a little essay and you got to write two letters of recommendations. And I wish we had the website to kind of port, point them to, but I don't have that information off site, but I wish we could get that, like a link actually, to that. Yeah, I've actually been looking at it to kind of um, corroborate a little bit oh, um, and to kind of like explore a little bit, but yeah. I, let's see. Oh, you know what? I was going to, copy and paste a link but i don't know that, that will work since it's kind of like me logged into my account okay um, okay but i might be able to screen share if um tanya will let me <laughs> okay go ahead and try it hi sean okay, okay but... yeah if you can just screen share let's see here yeah and it's a lot less yeah that's how y'all are describing it as less less intensive than i thought it was going to be okay okay cool so submission group we're talking about agp connect and because I haven't submitted any materials, I'll be submitting all right, right. materials. This is a statement of interest or the essay you're talking about, my oh, CV, okay. CV, those two letters of recommendation. Right. And then um, just some information. Yeah. Just kind of demographic okay. stuff. Also, it's all on. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's not that bad. And how do they just go, they go into it? AGPA and then. Um, this is AGPA. a separate, like, um, it's just separate from your AGPA account. So I just had to create a new thing, but it was easy to navigate once I was like on the AGPA um, website. conference website. Yeah, they had a special link for scholarships and stuff like that. And I was looking at Okay, that. yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we can do it to figure out, we can figure out our way to kind of send a link to the FGPS, um, to the email, if we can get to something like that, a special link, we'll see. Um, but one thing to consider is that, another thing is that, you know, they, they about 1,100 people have attended this conference in person. They historically give about 200 scholarships. So think about that. I mean, what organization do you know that like a fifth of the people are, that are coming are receiving scholarships? That's an amazing feat. I mean, that's the kind of that's the kind of gifts and the kind of giving that AGPA does. So I like to be part of an organization that does that. You know, doesn't just take what they give, right? And um, and I think, you know, you get the scholarships and of course you still got to worry about a hotel and so forth, but sometimes they can, I think they give you a little bit of discount on the hotel or, you, or um, there may be some other options for hotels um, in the area. Um, but I mean, the scholarships, I mean, you know, it's not a lot of work. Um, well, some work, but it's not a, it's a ton of work. And, uh, you know, I encourage people to apply. I actually got it for three years in a row um, when I first started out at AGPA. So you can apply more than once. And I got it. I think I got it twice, and then I think I got it after the deadline. And I got like a partial scholarship. <laughs> I got like maybe five hundred instead of the seven hundred that was that was required. Um, and also, the one thing to know is that if you look at the scholarship website, you might be like, "Well, they have this woman's one, and they have this other one about this one. They have like a bunch of different ones, right?" And so I was, and so luckily I, I attended a meeting recently. But um, that you don't have to worry about that. You just apply for the scholarships, and if and if you um, if you're like if you qualify for that, they will put that in the right direction. So you just apply generally. And let's say you're a, a woman of color, and so forth. Then they'll um, they'll put you to that committee, and they'll figure it out. So there's no like special re, uh, um, application you have to do. It's a general application. 
Yeah, and I remember you teaching me that or informed me of that last year, Miguel, because mm -hmm. I think they worded it pretty confusing. Even looking at it, knowing what you told me, yeah, um, I was looking at the list of scholarships, how to apply, all that, and then link to see the list of scholarships. Click this. And I think that's where it takes you to all the specific ones, and yeah. I didn't fit in any of those categories. So I was like, oh man, I won't apply because none of them apply to me. Oh. Right, right, but, but but remember that that's that you just apply and then they'll put you where you need to go. It might be a general one, it might be a specific one. Right. But you apply. That's the thing. That's good to know, and I, I you know, I just happen to find this out because it can be intimidating and confusing if you're not really sure, you know. So, yeah. Any questions? It seems like there's no virtual options this year, right? Is it all in person? Like you I can't even so. watch an in-person presentation. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the part I'm most nervous about, is like the travel and mm -hmm. those extra expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about the in person. Yeah, it's been three years. People I know. We'll be ready. There's a lot of hugging going on. <laughs> right. Well, it just, it's, um, yeah, the virtual, it wasn't quite the same for me, at least, right. Right. Know, being there present. Yeah. Which I was going to mention. I mentioned, I like happen to mention that I don't have a hotel room, but definitely stay in the, you know, in the hotel. If you can afford it, stay in the hotel that um, that's part of the conference. Makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Anything else? Anybody else? Any questions at all or comments? No. So if you do, you got, you know, I have my, my email um, and, uh, you know, and I don't be the only one. I mean, I can always just, uh, if you wanted to talk to anybody else, like uh, anybody else here, I can just tell me and I can, I can direct to them to see, you know, uh, see if you want to, they have some feedback as well, but I appreciate everybody coming and uh, consider AGPA, the conference. Oh. I wonder what, if a helpful piece of information could be what it's yeah. like, what's needed in the reference letters. So in case we're asking someone who hasn't written one before, um, or we're trying to gauge who to ask based on their availability. Do you know what goes into like the reference letter? You mean the recommendation letter? The recommendation, recommendation letter. yes, that one. Oh yeah. Oh, what goes into there? Um, I hmm. like in the past, I, I would I asked. Uh, I don't think there's anything specific in there. I just asked like a supervisor, so they knew me well, and mm -hmm. I think I got a letter from. Um, from someone that, uh, from a group therapist, actually. A group therapist. So that's who I got it from. I don't think there's anything specific in there. They just have to support. Yeah, the problem seems vague. Just use knowledgeable of your Yeah, they just kind of just support okay. your application applying for this, you know, okay. for the, for the uh, AGPA scholarship. So because I think it helped me, I don't, you, don't, you don't have to have this, um, but I think it, I had one for my supervisor and then had somebody involved in AGPA. So I think that has helped. But you don't have to have that. Yeah. You may not know anybody in AGPA, so then you're like, no, I'm not going to get it. No, no, just, just get somebody that knows you, that knows your work well, and someone familiar with you to write a letter in support of this, right? So, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's March 6th through the 11th. So we're, <laughs> we're all, but we wanted to kind of get people early so they can know about the scholarship and know about the other things as well. So, um, and also, you also realize that, you know, uh, probably pretty soon they're going to, I think they already opened up um, the institutes. And and then um, and they'll, and so they'll you know they'll be ongoing, but they eventually fill. So I think probably by you know, a certain point they'll start filling up. You'll see it online. You see, oh, there's eight spots less than this group, or there's six spots. Everything's online now, which is good. So you can see. Um, so and I think also there's one other thing too is I think if the if you get the scholarship, they still allow, or if you apply for the scholarship, I think they still allow you to kind of um, sign up, right, for the institute um, at the same time. So you don't have to wait till you get the scholarship to kind of get moving on that. So. Something else to consider. Yep. Final thoughts, everybody? Anybody? Well, thank you so much for doing this, Miguel. I know this was your idea and a lot of your expertise from years and your passion for the conference. So I really appreciate uh, you kind of bestowing that on us and being willing to answer all the thank questions you. and um, yeah. help us. Oh, I'm so glad you folks are here to help me out as well. Yeah. See, power of group, right? Power group. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So I think I said we'll just, I guess we'll just uh, somehow post this up to the uh, Facebook uh, Facebook page or something, or maybe we can, I don't know, figure it out. <laughs> out to the my, my aggressive washing machine will, you know, as a cameo appearance as well. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so Tanya, I think you might be the one with the access to the video. Um, I'll upload it. it to the, yeah, I'll I'll send you I'll send you a link or I'll send okay. everyone a link. Yeah. Okay. So we can decide if we want to put yeah. on the website yeah. or our YouTube channel. That might be the place for it. Yeah, that's cool. Bye. Bye, yeah, Yvonne. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.